really nice, especially with that low humidity. Feels really good outside, but the big question will it stick around all weekend? Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin joining us now. Chris, please give us some good news. Nope. Well, there it Tomorrow is. Tomorrow it will. It'll be very pleasant. Then the clouds, the humidity, and the rain will return for Sunday. So first half of the weekend, very nice. And then not quite as delightful as it will be on Sunday. We have good visibility, beautiful skies outside, and clear skies with that low humidity means it'll be getting cool through the overnight period. Already dropping into the 60s on the North Shore. 69 right now at Slidell, 66 degrees Hammond, and 69 south of the lake out toward Bell Chase as you get away from the city. We're still 75 degrees at Kenner. Now, this morning, Kenner was at 75, so it looks like we'll be lower than that by early tomorrow morning in the metro area. Dew point 60s at the moment, but they'll likely come down through the overnight, which will allow those temperatures to get on the cool side. And we'll start out the day south of the lake again in the city, probably at around 70, 71 degrees or so outside of the city. South will likely have the mid or upper 60s. North Shore temperatures, we will start the day into the low 60s and then start to quickly warm up with plenty of sunshine. But highs tomorrow also staying below the average. Average high this time of year is 89 and will probably be a few degrees below that for tomorrow afternoon. By Sunday, rainfall starts to return. Some scattered showers, but we're looking pretty wet for Monday and Tuesday as a tropical wave will be moving into the western Gulf. And there is a chance for some development. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, thanks so much. Louisiana State Police will implement policy reforms after months of controversy and investigations into alleged excessive force and withholding of information by troopers and the agency itself. Yeah, as Mike McDaniel explains, moving forward comes with more accountability, but critics say the agency still has to deal with the past. <laughs> It's video that sparked controversy inside Louisiana State Police, leading Colonel Lamar Davis to announce reforms across the agency Friday. I do not condone any form of excessive force, nor will I to tolerate this type of behavior in my agency. The 2019 video shows the deadly arrest of Ronald Green after a car chase in Monroe. Troopers are seen stunning, punching, and dragging Green. Colonel Davis says for some reason that video was never submitted into evidence and an internal investigation shows no intention of withholding it. Because of that video, though, other alleged cases of excessive force and questionable reporting against people of color have surfaced. I will not have anybody on our agency that's going to violate our laws. To build transparency and trust, Colonel Davis is implementing reforms. That includes immediate investigations of alleged misconduct, mandated training for troopers, greater accountability for body cameras and footage, and bans on chokeholds and impact weapons to the head and neck. We're going to enforce the standards equitably, fairly across the board, and we're going to build on it. And when we make mistakes, we're going to own it. Colonel Davis is using all the right buzzwords, but buzzwords aren't necessarily enough to tell Louisianans that we're going to see practical, actual reform. The ACLU of Louisiana is calling on the U.S. Department of Justice to launch a broader investigation into LSP's past practices. In order for us to really move forward as Louisianans, we need to right the wrongs of the past, and we can't just focus on the future. ACLU legal director Nora Ahmed says the death of Ronald Green is just one case, sparking a conversation that should have already happened. We have to see justice for that, and we need to see an acceptance that what happened there is not unique. Stopping short of accepting blame, Colonel Davis promises accountability will be top to bottom. We're going to continue to build our agency, but we're going to build it with troopers that care about our communities. And that's going to be held accountable. In Baton Rouge, Mike McDaniel, Eyewitness News. Two of the troopers seen in the Ronald Green video were fired. One of them died in a car accident after being terminated. So far, there's been no disciplinary action taken against the ranking officer, Lieutenant John Clary, who was in charge of that body camera video. Louisiana wildlife officials say they have documented more than 100 oil soaked birds after a crude oil spill from a refinery flooded during Hurricane Ida. How the Louisiana Department of Fish and Wildlife tells WWL it's not just birds that they found here, but alligators and others have also been impacted by the oil spill, which measures about three and a half acres. Wildlife officials say a growing number of oiled birds had been observed within heavy pockets of oil throughout the Phillips 66 Alliance refinery in Belchase, as well as nearby flooded fields and retention ponds along the Mississippi River. 
Now, the state is taking the impact of wildlife to a recovery center in New, I New Iberia, and ex experts believe that many of these animals can make a full recovery. Good news there. 2,000 meals were handed out in Metairie tonight, even though Entergy says 90% of the homes have lost, have power now rather. Many uh, lost all of their food whenever the hurricane plunged thousands of homes into the darkness. Reporter Kevin Landers explains how hard hit community members are caring for one another. All the way down. The line of cars. Six, yes ma'am. Do you need silverware? Wrapped around Lafayette Park in Metairie. Your truck's gonna be smelling really good in a second. I hope so. More than a hundred people. Hey, how many? Five. People looking for a hot meal. We actually lost our refrigerator in the storm, and so we haven't been able to buy any uh, perishable food. So we've been eating nothing but uh, chips and snacks. Some drove as far as 60 miles to get a container of jambalaya. People like Nate Schmidt. And it's awesome. We're hungry. Free food's always good. This area took a gut punch from Ida. The wind snapped telephone lines, uprooted trees, and crushed fences. In the east bank of Jefferson Parish, we have the, the largest amount of damage uh, that we've seen in parish history. Keep on coming, bud. Keep on coming. Which is why this food distribution event is so important to those who live here. I'm actually picking it up for my grandma. Ever since Hurricane Ida came on shore, organizers say they've hosted 12 of these events. The estimated 100,000 free meals have been donated to anyone who wants it. And while the power company says 90% of the power is on here, there you go. The power of a warm meal is also helping put smiles on the faces of people who just survived the second worst hurricane to ever hit the state of Louisiana. This is awesome. Kevin Landers, Eyewitness News. You. You're welcome. Just a few miles away, Ida left Kenner City Hall badly damaged. Heavy roof damage forced the building to close, and there's no timetable for when it's going to reopen. People looking to get permits still can, though. The city created a drive through permitting office in the Macy's building at Esplanade Mall. That drive through is open from 8.30 to noon Monday through Friday. Well, when Ida hit, City Park took a lot of damage, especially with fallen trees. Well, now after nearly two weeks of cleanup, the park is reopening again. Now, this was the damage left behind after the storm. The urban tree canopy was significantly damaged, along with other park amenities. And you can see right there on your screen when parts of the park reopen, including Bayou Oaks, the Children's Museum, and Cafe du Monde, which actually was open earlier today, rather. I was there earlier this morning, and there's still a lot more work to be done, so uh, they ask that you use caution while visiting. If you are looking for something to do with the family and to get out of the house, the World War II Museum is going to reopen this Monday. They said that with power restored and the site nearly cleaned up, they're ready to welcome visitors again. And to show their gratitude for all of the first responders, National Guard, electrical employees, and emergency personnel, they will receive free admission for the month of September. They're also offering half off admission for all Louisiana residents until the end of October. We got to love Drew Holiday, the NBA champ, his wife Lauren, and a few other fel former Pelicans are stepping up and helping out the community. Uh, the Holidays, along with Frank Jackson, Jaheel Okafor, and Langston, and Sabrina Galloway, they're giving away 200 generators, 200 gas cans, and gas cards to people throughout Southeast Louisiana. We know that they are desperately needed here. Uh, they partnered with the Baton Rouge activist Gary Chambers Jr. to provide the resources though, to those in need. Now the supplies are expected to arrive sometime this weekend. Another thing, if you're looking to do this weekend, Tipitina is hosting two nights of free shows. Yeah, they're hoping to raise money for people affected by Hurricane Ida. Musician Billy Ayuso joined the Eyewitness Morning News to talk about the two shows. This is literally the only gig I have in the books right now, which is really rare for this time of the year. So we're all just trying to get by and find work where we can. And, uh, you know, I was lucky in my house. We only had very minor damage. We stayed through the storm and uh, was able to keep the water from coming in the back of the house. And uh, so I was blessed, but there's a lot of people out there struggling. So we're just trying to give them a little reprieve and uh, a little fun, take a few hours and come out to tips and hang with us. So the show started tonight at 9 and tomorrow it starts at 9 as well. Doors open at 8 p.m. It's free, no tickets required, but they are asking people who attend to donate to Second Harvest Food Bank or the New Orleans Musicians Clinic. 
Among the destruction left by Hurricane Ida are legal troubles for Louisiana renters. Well, many of them are being asked to leave their homes, but they may have grounds to stay. Here's Devin Bartolotta. A full week after Ida, Homa Highland Apartments popped this notice into the inboxes of its residents, telling them to vacate immediately. I never thought living in an apartment that I can get an email and, and I'm gone. Ben Toops has lived here for nine years. There are piles of branches and siding in the parking lot. Most roofs have damage, but he and his wife say they have no damage in their unit and want to stay. Look, I'm not telling you got to haul me out of here with handcuffs, but I'm safe here. I got water. I got I got shelter. I got, you know, I, I, I'm safe here. I said, I'm not going to leave until I'm absolutely forced to leave. Homa Highlands is owned by ECI Group out of Atlanta. They didn't respond to our request for comment, but like other landlords, may have to answer to a judge. It's okay to freak out, but, uh, but you don't have to freak out. Attorney Hannah Adams of Southeast Louisiana Legal Services says even if you get a notice to get out, you have the right to go through the legal eviction process in court. Whether or not your landlord has a, the ability to terminate your lease after a storm, really has to do with how substantial the damage is. If you can still live there, you likely have a right to stay. Adam says document everything. Take lots of photos, damage or not. Communicate with your landlord in writing, like text or email. Let them know if you've evacuated and plan to come back and try to work together. It's a really good time as much as this is possible for landlords and tenants to try to work together and be in communication with each other. Toops did meeting in person with his building's corporate leaders. He didn't get the OK to stay, but after Ida took his own parents home in cutoff, he sees the big picture. We don't want sympathy. A little empathy would be nice, but people lost their home. Uh, we'll figure it out. In Homa, Devin Bartolotta, Eyewitness News. If you're finding yourself in an eviction situation thanks to Ida, Southeast Louisiana Legal Services might be able to help. We have that contact information rather on our website. Still to come at 10, tomorrow is a somber anniversary for the U.S. Well, we'll take a look at some of the ways those who died on 9-11 will be remembered tomorrow. And it is nice outside right now, but changes are coming. Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin has your weather expert forecast after the break.
tomorrow marks 20 years since the terrorist attacks of September 11th. Nearly 3,000 people were killed in New York, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Many are making the trip to New York to pay their respects. In Shanksville, Pennsylvania, family members carried lanterns to honor those who died on United Flight 93. The jet crashed into a field when passengers and crew tried to overpower hijackers that morning. Sadly, the number of victims from 9-11 is rising even today. It's estimated more people have died from 9-11 related illnesses than died on that day. Each life lost is a stark reminder that the long-term effects of the recovery work after September 11th are still present, even 20 years later. Security will be tight in the city and nationwide. A new CBS News poll finds that 20 years after 9-11, most see some success in efforts against terrorism, but say threats remain. Some local 9-11 remembrance ceremonies have been canceled or postponed because of Ida. The St. Tammany Fire District number one is going to hold a smaller ceremony <clears throat> tomorrow at the 9-11 Memorial in Slidell at Heritage Park. The larger Patriot Day ceremony has been rescheduled for September 19th. A smaller ceremony will start at 8.30 tomorrow morning, and officials are inviting anybody who's interested to join them for a prayer and a moment of silence to recognize that horrific event. I cannot believe it's been 20 years. That's one of those you'll remember where you were when you heard about it. Beautiful weather today. It was very nice, comfortable. We needed a day like this with the low humidity and even with bright sunshine, temperatures stayed out of the 90s. In fact, we stayed below our average high at the moment, 75 degrees. Not bad. That's our average low and we're already there and we'll continue to fall through the overnight. A dew point of 62. Those numbers usually do drop. Now light winds, it's saying out of the south. We don't really have an established southerly wind yet. That's coming as we head into Sunday. We will start to see our our winds returning off of the Gulf. 86 degrees was our high today below the average and our low for the day is actually where we are right now. So if we can come down another degree or two before midnight, that would be the official low for the day. Lows this morning though, we're at 59 degrees up in Bogalusa, low 60s on the North Shore, 67 degrees at Bell Chase and again 75 at Kenner. It looks like temperatures will be similar for tomorrow morning. So another cool start to the day thanks to clear skies. But notice clouds are not too far off of the coast, so it won't take much to see those clouds returning probably late Saturday and certainly during the day on Sunday in the 60s on the North Shore right now. 68 Bay St. Louis 67 degrees up at Bogalusa 74 at Raceland 73 Thibodeau and temperatures will continue to drop over the next several hours because we have light winds, clear skies and low humidity dew points in the 60s, but these will likely come down a few degrees during the overnight period. So our morning lows tomorrow. We may see some upper 50s once again, say as far north is Bogalusa or maybe even up in Macomb, but certainly low 60s, probably more lower 70s in the metro area with the 75 degree current temperature will probably come down a couple more degrees and then probably mid to upper 60s as you go south of the city. Tomorrow during the day, the dew points will stay low, but by late Saturday and into Sunday, here comes the mugginess. Now, not overly uh, uh, oppressive humidity, dew points, upper 60s and low 70s, and it looks like we'll probably stay there for most of the week, despite the fact that we will see a surge of tropical moisture headed our way. What that surge of moisture is going to do starting Sunday will begin increasing clouds and also bringing in some spotty or scattered showers. More rainfall is on the way as we watch a potential developing tropical system and a wave of tropical moisture headed our way. Nice tomorrow though. A lot of work to yet to be done outside and tomorrow will be a cooperative weather day. Then we'll see the scattered storms on Sunday, not a washout, but you'll have the hit or miss type showers and then that wave will be approaching as we get into next week, early in the week. We are at the climatological peak of hurricane season. The peak is today, September 10th. So though the frequency starts to drop, we are very much just looking at the total number of the past several uh, going back to the late 1800s of the total number of storms. We are still very much in an active part of the season up till about the midpoint in October. And so we have to watch everything a little bit closer, especially something that may be threatening the Gulf. Right now, though, the models have been indicating a more Mexico or Texas type of event. And the models, even as of the night, are getting a little more aggressive with developing this into a storm. So this could be 
uh, either or N or O storm as it moves up toward Texas and eventually moves its way inland. The longer it stays over water before moving inland, the stronger it could be. As for right, us right now, it looks to be mainly a rainmaker with both the GFS and the Euro keeping this well to our west. Unfortunately, though, we're not going to be able to avoid that surge of tropical moisture, which will be headed our way as we go toward the middle or the, excuse me, the beginning of the week. And some of the rainfall totals that we're expecting here right now looking at about one to three inches with higher amounts off to our west and it could be even higher than that depending upon how organized this system gets and it also looks like as it starts drifting into Texas it may not have a whole lot of steering meaning it may slow down a bit beautiful day tomorrow scattered showers Sunday wet on Monday and Tuesday and then back to our scattered variety by next week. Prep football makes a return to southeast Louisiana tonight. Plus, the Saints place a starting quarterback on injured reserve, and that puts a rookie in line for his first career start facing Aaron Rodgers. That's ahead in sports. Stick and stay. The Saints lost a starting quarterback ahead of Sunday's game against the Packers. Ken Crawley went on injured reserve with a hamstring injury. He will be out for at least the first three weeks. The black and gold will be thin at corner for Sunday, and help won't come until after the week one game against Green Bay. Rookie Paulson Adebo slides into the number two cornerback spot for Ken Crawley. Even though the Saints have confidence in him, it's still overall a tough spot to have just three healthy cornerbacks facing the lethal Aaron Rodgers. Reaching for the end zone and touchdown. He's a smart quarterback, been, been around him, you know. He, he's gonna be, you know, one of those Hall of Fame type quarterbacks. So, you know, you're not gonna fool him. You gotta come up, you know, you gotta show up and be ready to execute, be ready to cover the guys that he has and you know, he's gonna make some plays. The Saints would have some help in the form of former first round pick Bradley Roby 
New Orleans finalizing the trade for the Texans defensive back, but a suspension for week one will keep him off the field in Jacksonville and even away from TCU's facilities in Fort Worth. But the Saints eager to add a quality cornerback this late in the game. You know, when a position is a must, you don't know when you're going to be able to fill it. You hope to be able to fill it earlier than later. They're hard to find in the normal offseason. Obviously, it becomes more difficult to find as you get to your roster cutdowns. We're excited to, to get him. There's a handful of people that I know closely that have worked with him, coached him, and the feedback has been, been really good. He was a full participant on Friday and is good to go against the Packers. So is left tackle Teron Armstead. He missed practice Friday with a back ailment, but no game designation for him. Backup tackle James Hurst is listed as questionable, and Traquan Smith joins Ken Crawley on injured reserve. Hurricane Ida wiped out the first week of prep football in southeast Louisiana. It made a return to the metro area tonight for week two, but limited to just a few games on the North Shore. Mandeville able to schedule Dunham out of Baton Rouge tonight at Sydney Terrio Stadium. Hutch Gonzalez's crew coming off a 5A state quarterfinal appearance last season, but the skipper's breaking in a new quarterback this year. Kirk Dusang, that's how you start things off. Drops a 51-yard bomb right to land in Ibieta. Mandeville up 7-0. A 7-6 game at half. Mandeville opens the third quarter with a 12-play drive. John Patterson caps it off with a touchdown from four yards out. Mandeville rolls taking care of Gunham, Dunham tonight, 27 to six. Staying on the north side of the lake, Salmon and North Shore and originally scheduled for week two. Panthers would score in the final seconds to win 41-34. Covington beats Franklinton 34-21, and St. Paul's lost at Zachary tonight, 41 to two. Former Mandeville quarterback Cody Ozeron will lead McNeese into Death Valley tomorrow night to face his dad and the LSU Tigers. This will be the first time a father and son squared off against each other in a college football game since 1982. He's so excited, you know, and any kid, you know, you play at McNeese and you, they get recruited by LSU and you come play in Tiger Stadium, man. What, what a great night. It'll be a great night. You know, I know Frank will be fired up. Their team will be fired up, but so are we. We're hungry, we're mad, uh, and uh, there's only way to, one way to do it, go and win. And kickoff set for 7 o'clock tomorrow night at Tiger Stadium. And we'll be right back after this.
Yes, again, y'all heard that right. North Shore beat Salmon <laughs> tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our news for now. Thanks for watching. She's so excited about this. All right. <laughs> Woo! Have a great night, and we'll see you on Monday.